Good day, adventurers. It's me, Shirley. I'm here with a new look and a new Monster Monday show. Today is going to be a long one because today we're going to learn about golems, not golem. There are hundreds of different golems throughout all editions of Dungeons and Dragons. But since this channel is mostly centered around first edition D&D, so we're only going to be discussing the four main types of first edition golems. From weakest to strongest, they are flesh, clay, stone, and iron. Otherwise, we could be here all day. And we will timestamp these individual golems in the comments below for easier reference. Golems are magical constructs of elemental materials mostly based on a Jewish myth of the clay golem. They are non-intelligent and unaligned, uh, simply fabricated to perform a task. Virtually any material can make up a golem, including bone, wood, and obsidian, just to name a few. These creatures are made by a powerful spellcaster using spells, rituals, and rare items. Now normally these creatures are used for defense of any spellcaster, an army, or any property. Standing between 6 to 12 feet tall and weighing in at between 300 and 5,000 pounds, these constructs are ready to do the bidding of their masters at any cost. Golems have dark vision and can see up to 60 feet in the dark. They are sensitive to light, but can go out during the daylight, but to a disadvantage. And since they're not alive, they don't particularly live anywhere, but can be found wherever they have been summoned. Golems don't have to consume food for energy either. Now let's start out with our first on the list, the flesh golem. Much like Frankenstein's monster, these constructs are made up of at least six different corpses. The body parts, which consists of four limbs, a torso, and a brain, must be from normal corpses that have little or no decay. Freshly dead by only a few days. Special items must be used to help bind the flesh and to use it in the spell ritual that is needed to bring these creatures to life. These extra items can cost upwards to 500 gold pieces. The spellcaster must be powerful and at least level 8 to have knowledge to construct this monster and perform the ritual needed. And if the flesh golem is infused with pure negative energy, they will be considered unholy and wreak havoc everywhere they go. Flesh golems have a 1% chance of breaking free from the control of their spellcaster, going berserk and killing indiscriminately. If the flesh golem does break free from its master's control, the spellcaster must be within 60 feet of the monster to regain power over it. Their elemental spirit bound inside is sometimes trying to break free, causing these creatures to go berserk at odd times. These golems have lightning resistance, so if a magic user tries to subdue this creature with a lightning spell, it will be pointless and have no effect at all. This golem's main attack is slam, which can only be used one time its turn, using its intense energy to grab and slam the victim into the nearest hard surface. So yeah, these large hulking guys walk up to you, they stink to high heaven and grab you. What would you do? Hold your nose, of course. Flesh golems can mostly be killed by disarming, I mean, literally cutting its limbs off but there's always beheading it or killing the spellcaster that summoned it. Next on our list is the clay golem. This monster is the golem based on the Jewish myth of the clay golem of Prague, where a Jewish rabbi was said to create the golem out of clay from the bank of a nearby river and used it to stop attacks from the people across said river. Clay golems are created solely by clerics, as most arcane magic is unable to animate them. These creatures are made out of a single block of clay that weighs around 1,000 pounds. 
worth up to 1,500 gold pieces. Carved by a skilled potter and then finished with special oils and powders before the spell ritual is cast. Now, they also have a 1% chance of the cleric losing control of the monster. And if the cleric does lose control of the golem, it will attack the closest living creature, including the cleric that created it. And there is no known way to control it after that. Once these golems become animated, they can fight using its large fists to pummel any opponent. They have a berserk attack and haste for three rounds. It can also use a frightening speed up to once per day to gain ground on their intended targets. They have cursed wounds and won't heal normally. And oddly enough, acid will heal a wound on a clay golem due to it being an elemental item. These seem like the lesser evil of the golems on the list, but they still pack a punch when it comes to combat. Get it? Pack a punch? Since they basically just punch? <laughs> anyway, next up is our stone golem. These golems are made from a single block of stone, normally granite. Each stone block weighs up to 3,000 pounds and can cost up to 5,000 gold pieces due to its exceptional quality needed. Giant stone golems have been used for centuries to guard tombs and armories. Chiseled into a massive hulk-like humanoid, these are formidable monsters. They're made to the constraints of their masters and may be made to look like they're wearing armor and a helm. However, these features don't act to shield the golem from any harm, and neither does their stone weapon. These animated statues are able to use a 10 feet centered attack and slow effect for two times each round. Slam is its melee attack and slow effect can be used for ultimate force like slow motion. There's no way for a stone golem to become detached from control of their master, fulfilling the destiny of the spell that is cast and doing major damage to all objects around it. Imagine walking up to one of these massive creatures and feeling in awe of it, right before it knocks you into a rock or a tree. And there aren't many ways to kill these monumental constructs, short of blasting them to pieces. And last but not least is the Iron Golem, the most deadly of all on this list. These giants are made up of 5,000 pounds of iron and can be up to 12 feet tall. Special tinctures are needed to complete the ritual and these can cost upwards of 10,000 gold pieces for a whopping cost of around 150,000 gold for the whole golem. An adventurer such as yourself would have to level up and save a whole lot of cash for that. Though it is costly, these golems are worth it. These monsters are very impressive. Iron golems are, like other golems, infused with elemental features. Using the essence of the earth to gain strength to fight the spellcaster's foes with pure brute strength, since iron is forged inside the earth. Iron golems have two attacks that are outstanding, powerful blows and breath weapon. Their powerful blows inflict one and a half times its strength modifier and threatens a critical hit if a 19 or a 20 is rolled with its slam attack. Yeah, fists of iron smashing into your body doesn't sound that great to me, but the ultimate is yet to come. The Iron Golem's greatest attack, the breath weapon. This free action can be used every two to five rounds based on a die roll. The Golem exhales 10 cubic feet of poisonous gas which lasts for the whole round. Any creature in the gas cloud or walking through it 
will have to roll a saving throw against their constitution once per round for four rounds if the gas has been inhaled. Plus another saving throw for effect to see how much damage was caused. There are spell immunity with all golems, but the following spells will affect the iron golem. Electricity spells will slow them down, but not stop them completely for three rounds with no saving throw. Fire spells can damage them and will break any slow effect that is in play. And then there's the rust attack, such as the rust grasp spell, or an attack by a rust monster, will affect it in a negative way. For the obvious reason, of course, they're made out of iron. Remember, most golems are immune to all but a handful of spells, and it can take a long time adventuring to earn the money and leveling that's needed for a spellcaster to create one of these complex monsters. So, there's just one question to ask. How would you use this hulking giant monster in your next campaign? Tell us in the comments below. Well, that's it for this episode of Monster Monday. We hope you learned something you never knew but always wanted to. And if you like this video, please like and share with DMs everywhere. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you in our group. You can click here if you'd like to watch one of our other videos or our last Monster Monday episode. And until next time, thank you for watching.